So here is my dust monitoring box. It's pretty cool. Um, it's got a French cleat holder right here, so it fits right onto my wall, as you saw earlier, um, in a very simplistic design. So really, this thing is pretty simple. We'll go into more details later, but basically when there's dust in the air, it goes into this hole and there's an infrared light in there and a phototransistor. And depending on how much light can get to that phototransistor, you know, the more dusty, the less light, um, you're gonna get an output voltage that corresponds to that dust density. Then through an Arduino, it does a bunch of math, does it all for you it outputs a measure that's in micrograms per cubic meter. Now that is a standard density value. And you can go and look up on the EPA's website, you know, different hazardous levels um, in that same value. So then you can go and program in and say, hey, below this density value, give me a green light because we know we're good. Um, between these two numbers, it's moderate. Maybe you should be wearing a mask. And then finally, Hey, if it's above this number, you should be ventilating the area. Um, so pretty simple design. So there it is in all its glory. Let's go see how it works. Okay, so here's the first prototype that I made. Um, I won't bore you with how this all works completely, um, or all the connections rather, um, but just a brief overview. You have kind of the brains of the operation over here, this Ar Arduino Nano. Um, that's connected to this sensor, which is the dust sensor. Now I cheated a little bit. You'll see it's on a printed circuit board already, uh, which houses some capacitors, resistors in the circuit so that all I really had to do is connect these four cables to the Arduino and power. Um, and then we have a battery pack back here so we don't have to keep it plugged in. Um, and then as well over here we have the stoplight system. So the green, yellow, and red LED, they're hooked up to um, resistors and then digital outputs on the Arduino. So when we turn this on, we see the sensor come on, the green LED comes on, um, and it's working. So we can go check out how this works. shop um, let's flip this on so as a control um, I haven't done any woodworking lately haven't cut anything so you can see just in the shop it's green the green LED is on um, and I've got my test dust here so when I blow on this towards the sensor uh, we should see the light turn all the way to red because uh, it's a pretty significant amount of dust that would be in the air um, so let's go ahead and do that And as the dust is settling, you'll see it turn back to green. Um, there's still probably some particulate in the air, which is why you see it flashing back and forth. Um, but after just a few seconds, we should see that settle down on green. And there we go. All right, so now that we know that everything's working, the next step is actually to transfer this off of the breadboard and onto a perf board here. Um, so as you can see, it's really easy to pull these out and the whole whole circuit will stop working because um, this is not, it's pretty fragile and connections are not, are not permanent. But here we'll solder into this board, um, make it a little more permanent. I've thought about designing an actual PCBA uh, for this instead of using this perf or proto board, um, but that's for another video. Um, so we'll get this soldered up and then last thing will be to make an enclosure.
the solder together version, um, a little bit more permanent and then the breadboard, um, you can see soldered on the bottom. Um, for the Arduino, because that's the most expensive part, um, actually soldered in headers um, so that I can take this out. Um, if need be. Um, and then as well, these cables here, uh, just plug into the headers. So time to now look at the software and build an enclosure for all of this. So the next thing we're gonna do um, is I have this switch here, this push button switch. Um, so I should have done this before, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna add it in line here um, with the battery pack. Now this battery pack does have a switch back here already, um, but we're gonna add this one in because it's easier to mount into our uh, enclosure. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So here's the lid. Um, didn't film this, but I pre-drilled holes for the LEDs. Um, that'll just fit in by friction. And then I pre-drilled a hole for the sensor. Uh, my original plan was to countersink these two holes, uh, take these screws out um, and mount it in through the cover. Um, that didn't really work out. These screws weren't long enough um, and these are self-tapping screws so the threads are not um, a common size. So I just decided to take the easy way out and that's hot glue.